the director of DARPA, Dr. Stephen Walker. Thank you, and welcome to the DARPA AI Colloquium. We are excited that you are here so that we can share with you the breadth and depth of DARPA's AI R&D efforts. This colloquium is a special and somewhat unusual event for us. With all the current excitement surrounding AI, we felt there was a need for a grounded conversation about the capabilities and potential of this new technology, which already touches many aspects of our lives. This event will therefore go deeper into the technical details of DARPA's AI portfolio to give you a sense of the challenges facing researchers, not only in coming up with the next breakthrough, but in engineering what we already have in order to make AI capabilities more robust, safe, and reliable. I think you'll be impressed by the scale and the depth of this research portfolio, a portfolio that depends on a broad base of highly talented scientists and engineers in academia and the private sector. As you were registering, you may have noticed the posters in the lobby that summarize each of the, uh, each of the upcoming talks. The sheer number of research organizations represented underscores the fact that DARPA is highly effective at bringing people together and creating a robust and diverse US research base in this area. This base, this research base, will be absolutely critical for maintaining the country's techn technological edge in this increasingly competitive world. DARPA has been creating a highly effective US research community in AI for a long time. Starting with a decade-long block grant, starting with decade-long block, block grants in the 1960s, grants that funded a wide range of fundamental research in areas as diverse as natural language understanding, theorem proving, and robotics. At, th at, at the time, many in the field thought these grants would be sufficient to create general AI. However, the computers of the day were nowhere near up to that task, and the approach taken, which focused on abstract logic and explicit representations of knowledge proved insufficient. The first wave of AI research peaked in the 1980s with expert systems that attempted to encode the knowledge of human subject matter experts in the form of handcrafted if-then rules. Unfortunately, for every rule, there's an exception, and it soon became apparent that expert systems are brittle when confronted with situations that don't conform to their rules. And adding a new rule to account for every exception quickly becomes intractable. So starting in 1990 or so, a second wave of AI research focused on biological inspiration by building neural networks that bear some similarity to the human brain. Rather than explicitly writing down world knowledge for these systems, researchers train them with large numbers of labeled examples. Starting in 2010, sufficiently powerful computer hardware became available to make these approaches work surprisingly well. Second wave AI systems have made remarkable advances, enabling face recognition, self-driving cars, and personal assistants such as Siri, which actually had its origins in a DARPA program called uh, Personalized Assistant That Learns. Like first wave expert systems, however, second wave systems have shortcomings. While adding imperceptible amounts of noise to a picture can cause a trained neural network to wild, wildly misclassify it. Also, the knowledge of neural networks is contained in millions of link weighting factors, making these systems incapable of explaining their decisions. And finally, these systems are best conceived of as machine-trained systems, not learning systems, because once their training phase is complete, they no longer really learn. Over time, they go out of sync with the world, introducing new potential failure modes. DARPA is therefore funding efforts 
to move beyond second wave systems. For example, our explainable AI program is developing new computational architectures that enable neural networks to explain themselves, a capability that will help human operators develop appropriate levels of trust in their systems. And our lifelong learning machines program is focusing on creating systems that can learn from experience while operating in the real world. At our DARPA 60th anniversary conference last September, I announced the AI Next campaign, a campaign in which we are committing $2 billion over the next five years to maintain US leadership in the rapidly evolving field of AI. Since I made this announcement, we have initiated nine new major AI R&D programs at DARPA and have developed a very quick turn exploratory research procurement mechanism that we call AI exploration or AIE. <clears throat> AI exploration enables us to go from announcement of a funding opportunity to awarding a contract in 90 days or less. And we've met that goal on every one of the topics we've announced. Individual awarded efforts are limited to $1 million in a period of 18 months. Now these efforts will enable us to rapidly explore high risk, high payoff ideas that may form the basis of a future larger DARPA program. Our first AIE opportunity, Physics of AI, as an example, is investing how explicit representations of the physical world, such as liquid water becomes solid ice when you reduce the temperature, how that can augment AI reasoning. Another AI effort, Microscale Biomimetic AI Networks, or Microbrain, will take inspiration from the neural structures of tiny insects, which effectively navigate, feed, and reproduce with only a few thousand neurons. As I said, in parallel with these rapid exploratory efforts, we've also initiated nine new major R&D programs focusing on advancing the state of the art beyond current statistical pattern recognition approaches. For example, our Learning with Less Labels program is seeking to reduce the number of manually labeled examples required to train a neural network by a factor of a million. Our Machine Common Sense program will investigate methods for acquiring and reasoning with basic knowledge of the world. We hope to have an AI system by the end of this program that has the understanding of an 18-month-old child. And finally, our Guaranteeing AI Robustness Against Deception program, or GARD, will seek to develop the theoretical foundations of statistical pattern recognition in order to find general defenses against misclassification attacks on neural networks. So far, we only have point solutions to such adversarial image attacks as the practice of machine learning has run well ahead of the underlying theory. So DARPA's role is to create and thus prevent technological surprise for the United States and our partner countries. We have been doing this successfully now for 61 years. And for approximately 56 of those 61 years, we've been investing in creating technological surprise in the fields of artificial intelligence and computing. Over the next two days, I hope you will appreciate, as I do, that DARPA continues to push the envelope, continues to challenge the status quo, and continues to create what artificial intelligence will look like tomorrow and well into the future. Technology rarely advances on a straight path. So some of what you see uh, over the next two days may flow directly into common use, whereas other advances may spur the development of innovations that take a decade or more to come to fruition. In either case, it's very likely that you will have seen it here first. And with that, I welcome you to the DARPA AI Colloquium. Thank you. <laughs>